I know we've already heard a couple of talks today about the concept of computational law. I want to break it down a little further from the perspective of being a researcher in Sandy's Human Dynamics Lab, where really we've been pioneering computational social science. The law is also a social science as well as a profession. And this is all about how we can apply computational techniques to the law. In a nuts and bolts way, what I think that means is when the law is computational, firstly, it would be composed of standard data, data that is usable in multiple contexts, that is interoperable. This data would comprise applications and automated systems that can express themselves as services, like through an API, and in that way be easily integratable to public or private sector transactions or, or other systems. So there's been a concept of AI um, that looks something like on the left, uh, an autonomous system that's like a robot. A lot of people think AI in law means no lawyers will have a robot. That is, you know, and there are some areas where that's going to be appropriate, but there's another vision that we embrace at the Media Lab, which we call extended intelligence. That would be more like the Iron Man suit than C-3PO. So part of the vision of computational law is for lawyers and legal service providers to use the technology to extend their cognition, to extend their capabilities, so that they can play a more productive role in society and the economy at large. To achieve this vision going forward, we're going to be taking some of the research activities and hackathons that we've talked about and other activities and starting to concentrate it into a nexus of a new online publication from the Media Lab and the Human Dynamics Group called the MIT Computational Law Report. So I'm very happy to announce today that this will be launching in September. Unlike a law review or a more traditional journal, um, this will also, in, in addition to having articles and posts, we're also going to really embrace new media, podcasts, interviews, infographics, and also data sets and data science um, experiments so that people will be able to upload data science they've done in the law with the data set, like the Python notebook or the R Studio script, in a way that others could reproduce it independently. We think that this scientific method is going to be an important part of computational law so that it can be reliable, transparent, and accountable. And also, in this open culture scientific method way, um, a resource that can be built upon so that all these innovations happening from around the world can be more easily discovered and understood, reproduced, and extended. Another part of this is going to be curating a list of what we think are the top maybe 10 or 20 open challenges for computational law and putting those out into the wild um, and using objective criteria so that as they're solved, we can um, kind of check them off the list, basically, and people that are looking to work on that problem can see the prior work. I think one of those challenges, as an example, is going to be creating an automated legal entity. This is something which is we're close to doing now, but between the corporate lawyers and the DAO experts and other automation experts, we think that we'll be able to achieve this challenge within perhaps as short a time as a year and test it against some objective criteria, like is it listed in a jurisdiction's registry? Can it form an enforceable contract? These types of typical standards. Legal notice, um, uh, computational contracts would be other types of standards. We'd like to ask all of you to think, what would be the main challenges for computational law to unleash the potential of having law act as a service to enable what you're all trying to do, and join us at law.mit.edu, where you can get updates on this publication as it launches, but also submit your ideas for challenges, and Sandy and others will help curate that list when we launch it, and also to submit ideas for articles, or if you'd like to be interviewed on one of our podcasts, so that we can really get the idea flow that's needed to make the most of this opportunity. So please join us, law.mit.edu. Thank you.